In the following part we will be looking at lines. The general equation of a line which is not parallel to the y-axis can be written as y is mx plus q. So this is the line not parallel to the y-axis. If the line is parallel to the y-axis then it is just x equal to a, in which case you obtain a line parallel to the y-axis. In the first formula, y equal mx plus q, we call m the slope of the line and q is the intercept. To see the interpretation of slope and intercept, let us look at the following example. Suppose we have a line y equal to 3x plus 1. Drawing this line gives us the following graph. The interpretation of the intercept is quite straightforward. The intercept is just the value that you obtain for y if x is equal to 0. So intercept, if x is 0, so it is the intersection with the y-axis. So it is the y-coordinate of the intersection of the line with the y-axis. For the slope, let us take a look at what happens if we take one step forward. By this I mean what happens if x increases by a value of 1. Thus, if we go 1 to the right, if we go 1 to the right, so on the x-axis, what then happens with the value on the y-axis? We then go up, in this case, a value of 3. So we see, if we look at the plot, if you move 1 to the right, you go up with 3. So this is basically, the slope tells us what happens after this step to the right. So we move up or down, depending on the sign. If it's positive, we move up. If it's negative, we move down with a value equal to the slope on the y-axis. Thus for an increase of 1 in the x-direction, we have a change, so this corresponds to an increase or a decrease of m in the y-direction. The size of the increase this corresponds to the absolute value of m. Whether or not it is up or down will depend on the sign of m. For a line y equal to minus 2x plus 1, we get the following plot. What we see here is that the intercept is 1, and so also the intersection with the y-axis is 1. And we see also we have a slope of minus 2. So when we move 1 to the right, we move down with a value of 2. If y is equal to 1, so we only have an intercept and no slope, we get the following. The line is parallel with the x-axis and is constantly equal to 1. In this case, the slope is 0 and the intercept is 1. And then the last type of line you can get, suppose x is equal to 3, we get the following plot. It forms thus a line parallel with the y-axis and the slope will not exist and there is also no intercept. How can we find then the slope of a line? Assume we have the following example. So we have a line which intersects the y-axis at 4 and the x-axis at 3. When we look at the plot, we see that the line goes down. We can even see that if we go 3 to the right, then we move 4 down. Or in general, if we move 1 to the right, we go down by 4 over 3. We can write this formula as delta y divided by delta x, where delta y is the change 
in y value and delta x is the change in the x value. In our specific case, delta y, the change in y value is minus 4. We move 4 down when we move 3 to the right. So the slope in this case, m, will be minus 4 over 3. If we want to write the formula more generally, suppose we have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Two points define a line, so with two points we can find the slope. The slope, m, is then the change in y, so it is y2 minus y1, divided by the change in x, which is x2 minus x1, which is also equal to y1 minus y2, divided by x1 minus x2. So you just have to subtract the y-coordinates and divide them by the subtraction of the x-coordinates, but the order of the points doesn't matter. So the order of the points is irrelevant, If we have a horizontal line, then y1 is equal to y2, and so the slope is zero according to the formula, which corresponds to what we saw in the examples. And if we want to make a link with trigonometry, let's call this angle theta, then the tangent of theta is the opposite divided by the adjacent, and so the tangent of theta also corresponds to the slope m. Some quick examples. What is the slope of the line? Through the points 1, 2 and 3, 4. Similarly, what is the slope of the line through the points 7, minus 1 and minus 3, minus 1? And thirdly, what is the slope through the points 2, 1 and 2, 4? For the first one, we apply the formula. So it is the change in y divided by the change in x. So assume we do 2 minus 4 divided by 1 minus 3. So it is minus 2 divided by minus 2 or 1. So the slope is 1. For the second one, you have delta y over delta x is equal to minus 1 minus minus 1 divided by 7 minus minus 3, or the slope is 0. This means we have a horizontal line. And the last one, delta y over delta x, is 1 minus 4 over 2 minus 2. So here the slope is infinite, so the slope does not exist, and we have a line which is parallel to the y-axis. How can we then find the equation of a line? This will depend on what we know. So we could have, for example, first a point and a slope. So if the point and the slope are given, or known, then we just plug it in in the formula. Assume that m, the slope, is equal to 2, and you know that the point minus 2, 3, is on the line. You take the general formula of a line, so it is y equal to mx, so 2 times x, plus the intercept q. And then you know that minus 2 and 3 is on the line. So p lies on the line. So this has to be an, a solution of the equation. So 3 is 2 times minus 2 plus q and from this you find that q is equal to 7 and thus the equation of the line in the end is y equal to 2x plus 7. If on the other hand you only know two points, so two points define a line, so if two points are given you first calculate the slope and then you use the previous method. Assume we have the points p, 2, 1 and q, 1, 4. In that case we first calculate the slope m, which is 4 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 2, so it is minus 3, 
and then we plug it in into the formula. So the formula it then becomes y is 3 times x plus q. We have two points which both are on the line, so we can pick either of them. Suppose that we say p is on the line. And we plug in the values of p, so y is 1, is equal to minus 3 times 2 plus q, or q is equal to 7, and we get as the equation y is minus 3x plus 7. What we just observed, we can write this down as properties also, so property. First one, the equation of a line with slope m passing through the point with coordinates x1, y1 is given by y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. And then for the second property, the equation of a line passing through two points, so passing through the points x1, y1 and x2, y2 is given by y minus y1 equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 times x minus x1. So you see it's the same formula as in the first property, except that now we changed the slope m by the formula of the slope. The proof is very straightforward. So in the first case, the slope is given. So we know that y is mx plus q, and you also know that the point x1, y1 lies on the line. So we just plug it in, so you get y1 is m times x1 plus q, or q is y1 minus m times x1. If we then put this in the equation, so the general equation becomes y is m times x plus the intercept q, which is y1 minus m times x1. Then you just rewrite this and you find y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. For the proof of the second one, you know that the formula for the slope m is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and then you apply the first part. Which concludes the proof. What can we say for parallel and perpendicular lines? Let us first look at parallel lines. Parallel lines are two lines which never intersect. So two non-vertical lines, they are parallel if and only if the slopes of both are the same. So if and only if they have the same slope. For perpendicular lines, we have the following. So two lines with slopes m1 and m2 are perpendicular. So this means that the angle between the both lines are, is 90 degrees. If and only if The multiplication of the slope, so m1 times m2, is equal to minus 1. Let's now apply these two concepts. First, find the equation of the line through the point 5, 2, n, which is parallel to the line 
4x plus 6y plus 5 equal to 0. For the second one, find the equation of the line. Through the point 1, 1 this time. And which is perpendicular to the same line. So perpendicular to 4x plus 6y plus 5 equal to 0. For the first one, we have given a line 4x plus 6y plus 5 is 0. And we need the slope. So for finding the slope, we have to rewrite the equation. So 4x plus 6y plus 5 is 0 which means that y is equal to minus 4x over 6 minus 5 over 6. And so the slope, what we have here, is minus 2 over 3. Since we know that the lines are parallel, the slope of the other line will be the same. So it will also be minus 2 over 3. So the line that we are looking for has the following equation. y minus the point which lies on it 5, 2, so minus 2 equal to minus 2 over 3 times x minus 5 or y is minus 2 over 3 times x plus 10 divided by 3 plus 2 or it is minus 2 divided by 3 times x plus 16 divided by 3 or 3y is minus 2x plus 16. For the second one, we know that the slope of the first one, so m1, is minus 2 over 3. The line has to be perpendicular, so m1 times m2 is 1, or minus 2 over 3 times m2 is 1, or the slope for my other line is 3 over 2. Thus the equation of the line that we want is y minus 1 equal to 3 over 2 x minus 1. And when we rework this, we get y is 3 over 2 times x minus 1 over 2. For the final formula, let's look at the distance from a point to a line. Assume we have a line L with the equation ax plus by plus c equal to 0. And we have a point p with coordinates x1 and y1. For this formula, it is very important that you write the equation in this form. So you have to have an equation equal to zero, otherwise the formula will not work. In this case, the distance from the line L to the point P has the following formula. It is A times x1 plus B times y1 plus C. We take the absolute value and now we divide by the square root of A squared plus B squared. So it is the equation of the line in which we plug in the point P. So we replace X and Y by the coordinates X1 and Y1. We take the absolute value and then we divide by the square root of the squared values of the X and Y coefficient of the line. So the different representations of the line are the following. First, we have a slope-intercept representation. In this case, you just have y equal to mx plus q. The second is the linear equation. For a linear equation, we write ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. In this case, the slope m is minus a divided by b. The intercept q is minus c divided by b. Another form of representing a line is through polar coordinates. Polar coordinates, they represent a line through an angle and a distance. If we think back on trigonometry, we know that we could represent a point through its coordinates. x would be r times cosine theta, y was r times sine of theta. In this case, r is the distance to the origin. And theta is the angle 
that you make with the positive x-axis. Counterclockwise, of course. We then have the equation of the line y equal to mx plus q or r times sine of theta is m times r times cosine of theta plus q. Or we can rewrite this in r. r is q divided by sine theta minus m times cosine theta. And then the last one, we can also write it in vector coordinates. So in this case, you write the point as a vector. So the point x, y will be written as the vector x and y. And then you know y is m times x plus q. x is just x. So this is x times the vector 1m plus the vector 0q.